friends, I welcome you all to our today's session. Uh, we'll be discussing basic concepts of mutual fund. Uh, you might have heard various, uh, you might have heard various names of mutual funds. There are, in fact, a uh, uh, number of entities and number of companies who offer various schemes where money can be invested. Mutual fund schemes, they're called as mutual fund schemes. Normally, it is understood that risk involved in the mutual fund investments are relatively less in comparison to the investments made in the stock market. How this mutual fund works, who manages the mutual fund, all these concepts we are going to learn today. So in coming uh, roughly around 35 minutes, we'll try to cover the, all the concepts of mutual fund, all the basic concepts. I to say. So now I am sharing the screen with you. First, let us understand what is a mutual fund. Please appreciate that it is a trust, and in this trust, what happens? It uh, like-minded people, that is like-minded investors, they contribute money. So mutual fund pools money from like-minded shareholders, and that money is invested in a portfolio of securities. Okay, portfolio of securities means it is a well-diversified portfolio. It is not that we invested in one particular company's shares or one particular company's bond. It is invested in a well-diversified portfolio of securities. And uh, ultimately what happens that investment money grows because they are properly invested, so their value increases. And uh, when value increases, ultimately, who gains? That fund's wealth gets maximized and consequently, investors' wealth also gets maximized. And you know, the objective of the investor is always to maximize his wealth, and that is possible through investment in mutual fund. And these mutual funds offers various schemes that address various needs of the investor. There are some investors which want to which want to maximize the return in the sense they want a kind of capital appreciation. There are some investors who want a kind of regular income. So depending upon their needs, so different schemes are offered by these mutual fund companies and one investor may uh, uh, invest money in a particular scheme depending upon his needs. As per his own need, he may decide where money has to be invested. Now, as we are talking now that the money is collected from investors and that money is invested in a portfolio. Who does it? There is an entity who are called as asset management companies or AMC. This AMC manages the fund of the mutual fund. The pool of money which is collected by mutual fund is invested by the AMC. Or AMC stands for asset management company. They decide different kinds of securities where this money is to be invested. The securities may be shares, debentures, convertibles, bonds, money market instruments anywhere so this asset management company decide where return will be maximum where risk will be minimum and he suggests and it takes care of the bonds of the future and as you know there are different schemes different types of mutual bond you can call them and the objective of each scheme is different and the objective of scheme is clearly laid down in the offer document of the scheme let us say you want to make some investment in a particular mutual fund scheme. Then we are expected to read the offer document carefully so that you can understand what is the objective of the scheme. Right. Ultimately, the fund adds value to the investment. Right. Let us say you have invested some money. Let us say you have invested 5,000 rupees. Your expectation is that the 5,000 rupees will grow. Some values should be added to your initial investment. And that is possible in two ways. So like this, like you, many other like-minded people might have contributed to a particular scheme. Now a total fund is created. Let us say you have contributed 5,000 rupees. Somebody has contributed 10,000 rupees. Somebody might have contributed 15,000 rupees. Okay. So accordingly, you hold different number of securities, different number of units on the basis of your investment. Okay, so now you see the total fund or the pool of fund is available with the mutual fund. Let us say total money is one lakh. Now this there should be some value addition to this money. That means that one lakh rupees should grow. 
and that is possible in two ways. First of all, its income is R. Let us say that one lakh rupees mutual fund company is investing in stock market. So it may earn dividend, or it is invested in certain bond. So it will be earning interest. Therefore, money will flow. Number one. Number two is that capital appreciation. The money is invested in the stock market, and capital gets appreciated. The value of stock also increases. So this is another way through which uh, the value of fund grows. Right? Are you getting? Are you getting? And let us yes, say, sir, yes, sir. let us say that one lakh rupees after this, in considering all this income, become one lakh ten thousand, right? Total fund was one lakh rupees, now it become one lakh ten thousand. Now this one lakh ten thousand rupees, if we distribute, what is the number of units? So each each investor must be holding certain units. So each investor has got a share on this one lakh ten thousand. Suppose you have invested five thousand rupees. It might have become, let us say, five thousand five hundred rupees, like this. This is how it works. Understood? So, if you look at this picture, you will have some idea about how investment actually happens. Let us say here is the investor. Investor gives money to the mutual fund, or you can say mutual fund pools their money or collects money, right? But investor will get investor will contribute money and he will become owners of the unit. He is not the owner of the fund. Fund belongs to the mutual fund, but he will be buying certain units. Are you getting? Investor will give some money to the fund and he will be the owner of certain units of mutual. And mutual fund will invest it in certain securities, and the security will generate return, and the return can be regular income. In the form of dividend, interest, etc., or can be capital appreciation, and the returns will be passed back to the unit holders, passed back to the investors, because ultimately investors' unit value increases, goes up. If return is R, then investors' unit value goes up. Investors might sell that unit and gain profit. Okay. Are you getting? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you see. Now coming to features of this mutual fund. You see, these are the certain features. First of all, pooling of resources. Resources are pooled. So all small investors they contribute their money, and a great big pool is pool of money is created. Pooling of resources. And mutual fund is managed professionally. These professionals decide where money has to be invested so that it will ensure proper growth. So individually, suppose you invest that five thousand, you may not be able to take a professional decision, or you may not be able to hire a professional to advise you where investment has to be made. But when money is collected and mutual fund or the asset management company manages it, he takes the help of professional, and the investors become owners. They are not lending money to the fund. They are become actually they are the owners of the units of the fund. So it is not a lending activity. It is an ownership activity. Each investor has got a share in the fund, and each investor owns an unit in the fund. He owns a unit, not the assets. Fund's assets are different, and the asset of the investors is different. Investor owns a unit, not the assets. Okay, and NAV or net asset value of the fund is computed on that basis. The value of the units are decided, and some of the schemes of mutual fund offers tax benefit. So it is a helpful investment. It's a good investment from taxation point of view. So tax concession or tax rebates are available when money is invested in mutual funds. Is it clear up to this? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Okay, great. Now, who are the people who are involved in this fund? One is that is a sponsor to the mutual fund. 
Okay, let's say SBI Mutual Fund, State Bank of India may be the sponsor. There are trustees. Mutual fund itself is a trust. There are asset management companies who decide where money has to be invested. There are unit holders of investors who gives money, who invest money. And there are other intermediaries that are also involved like custodian, transfer agents, depository, where these securities will be kept in dematerialized form. Transfer agent will facilitate the transfer, custodian will keep the securities. So all these people are involved. Or you can say they are the players in the mutual fund industry. Okay, you can have a look at this picture now. And it is also controlled by Security and Exchange Board of India. Unit holders are there, trustees are there, sponsors are there, asset management companies are there, mutual fund itself are there, transfer agent, custodian, all these people are involved in an organization of mutual fund. Let us understand what is the role of asset management. This AMC is involved in the daily administration and also act as an investment advisor to the fund. This is in fact a company which is promoted by the sponsor, which is usually a reputed corporate entity. And normally, the asset management company has these three departments, sales and marketing department, fund management department, and operating and accounting department. Mutual fund, and ultimately, this asset, man asset management company focuses on maximizing the value of the fund. We'll be looking deep into that subsequently but in the meantime let us understand various types of mutual fund but or various schemes of mutual fund okay so in fact there are n number of schemes it's very difficult to uh, organize in a particular site what are the schemes but these are it is a major schemes you can say by structure we can divide the schemes like open ended scheme closed ended scheme and interval schemes on the basis of investment objectives, you can schemes like growth schemes, income schemes, balance schemes, and money market schemes. And on the basis of types of schemes, or some other basis, you can have like tax saving schemes, where intention is to save tax, special schemes, maybe for some specific purpose, the scheme is for pension purpose, the scheme is for special schemes. Index schemes will money will be invested only in indices like Nifty, Sensex, etc. And specific sector schemes. A scheme is open for a specific sector or to meet the requirement of specific group of people. Let us say for doctors, there is a scheme. So doctor scheme, like this, the specific scheme, sector specific scheme. So, like this, we can classify schemes. Okay. So one by one, we'll try to quickly understand all these things. Open-ended, close-ended interval schemes. Let us see that. What is open-ended scheme? This is an open-ended fund which is available for subscription throughout the year. That means for subscription, it's all, subscription is always open. At any point of time, you can invest money in this scheme. Okay, they do not have any fixed maturity. At any point of time, one may buy and sell this units at net asset value. So it can be bought and sold at the net asset value. Therefore, it is called as open-ended. It is called open-ended because at any point of time, it can be bought and sold. What is closed-ended? It has a stipulated maturity period, which ranges from 3 to 15 years. So it has to be purchased and it has to be redeemed at the end of the period. The fund is open for sponsorship only during their specified period. Investors can invest in this scheme at the time of its initial public issue. And thereafter, they can buy and sell the units of the scheme in the stock exchanges where they are listed. Okay, this is called as close ended scheme. Secondary market, one can buy and sell. But first time issue comes in the IPO and it is for a stipulated period. This difference between open ended and closed ended scheme. Interval scheme is a hybrid of both. It combines the features of both open ended and closed ended scheme. 
the bond remains open for sale or redemption during predetermined intervals. Right, let us say once in six months or once in a year, it can be open for sale or redemption. During that time, it can be bought and sold. That is called as interval. Okay. So I think you have understood this by structure, how can we can classify open-ended fund, closed-ended for interval schemes. On the basis of investment objective, growth schemes means the focus of the fund is to ensure growth of the money. The fund value should grow up, even if income may not be there. Suppose fund is invested in the equity shares and the share value is increasing. That will ensure growth of growth of the form. Income scheme, where intention is to ensure regular income, even if money is not growing, but some regular income should be generated. So people, let us say, retired people who want a kind of regular income, they may invest money in this scheme, so that on a regular basis they can get some income. And people who do not have immediate requirement of money, they may invest money in growth scheme. Balance scheme, Maybe some portion of the money will be invested in growth for some portion of the money invested in income. Form. So it has features of both. It will ensure growth as well as it will bring some income. Money market scheme where it will be invested uh, for certain sectors for one year. We'll be understanding all this. Now we can also classify fonts like equity fund, debt fonts, or balance fund or hybrid fund. Equity fund means the fund money is invested in equity shares. And as you know, equity shares are relatively more risky. The fund is also open to market risk. There is a possibility that equity shares price may go up, may come down. So this fund is also exposed to similar kind of risk. Debt funds, it's another kind of mutual fund where money is invested in debt security. Debt security, there is also risk like credit risk. There is possibility of default, default in uh, uh, payment of interest or default in repayment of money. That is credit risk. There is also interest rate risk. Let us say, fund has invested money in a particular debt instrument, but after that, market rate goes down. So that the interest rate risk. Okay, and uh, you know what happens, Bond has invested money, but in case future what will happen, the form, where money is invested in that bond, that value may go up, may go down. If the market interest rate increases, if you have understood the concept of bond, if the market interest rate increases, bond value goes down. And if the market interest rate decreases, bond value goes off. So when invest when in a debt fund, the mutual funds and mutual fund has invested its money in the debt fund or in a bond kind of thing, there's a possibility that bond value may go off, bond value may go down. So that is the risk which debt fund faces. Did you understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are other fonts like equity link tax saving schemes, which are tax saving purpose, exchange traded fonts, which can be freely traded in exchange, monthly income plans, government's equity fund, index fonts, or in which invest money in indexes like this. These kind of fonts are there. Various kinds of fonts are there. In fact, if you want to know what are the various kinds of fonts, I can give you a link. You can Always see, I'll show you something. Yeah, here is the link. If you go there, there is this SEBI FAQ, FAQ, which talks about various kinds of schemes. I, I would like to show you that thing right now. Give me a moment. That link I had shown you, if you search there.
Yeah. Are you seeing it now? Is the investment in mutual funds FA? This is released by Security and Exchange Board of India. You can have what is a mutual fund? All this idea you can have through this FAQ. Okay, history of mutual fund. Okay, what is NAV? And it will be talking about you see what is co generated operated in the schemes. Growth equity oriented, all these schemes are there. You can have some idea about this. Okay. That link I'll be showing you. You can have a night. Now we will be quickly understanding what are the advantages of mutual fund. First of all, the fund will be professionally managed. Investment will be well diversified so that risk will be minimum. Economies of search is there. There is an individual you want to invest, you have to search. Now you see, you need not do that thing. Because various people, all the investors have already joined that fund is investing there. Investing the entire pool. So the cost of searching will be less. There will be economies of scale. Money at call, that means at any point of time, one can liquidate mutual fund investment can get money liquidity it has got good liquidity options are plenty various options are available if you want to invest in a particular mutual particular scheme you can choose it n number of schemes are available it's a very convenient way of making investment and through this in mutual fund you can go to various places where you normally is not acceptable. So, so, for example, normally an individual you may not be able to buy government securities, you may not be able to buy treasury bill, but mutual fund can invest in those segments. So, through you or uh, through mutual fund, one can visit on this kind of places where money can be invested. Mimicking the in index mutual fund exactly can invest exactly mimic or can mean exactly can create an index of its own. It can make investment in the index itself so that it will get return par with the market. So mutual fund can follow the index individually. You may not be able to do because for, for doing that thing, you have to purchase various securities or various sectors. And mutual fund industry and these investments are well regulated also. So these are advantages of mutual. And uh, benefits, as you know, the money is invested by experienced and skilled professionals. Since the investment amount is used automatically, it is well diversified, it is liquid, it gives high return, cost of search is less, and the risk is spread over the last, uh, over a large section. And there is transparency, it is well regulated. A lot of schemes are available to choose from. Choose from. So these are the benefits of the mutual fund which you discussed right now. And uh, there are some demerits also, you can say nightmares. Friends, practically there is no guarantee that mutual fund will give you some good return or a return. There is also possibility of loss. Okay, there is possibility of diversion also. Suppose money, you are thinking that money will be invested in a particular sector. There is a possibility that asset management company may divert it to some other sector that possibility is also there that risk is there and it has some cost mutual for investment has got some cost might be entry load exit load when you invest money at the beginning at the end when you redeem these mutual funds some it will involve some cost they are called as the load cost selecting right fund is also a challenge and uh, there has been also examples where some unethical practices are there that means Mutual fund monies are not exactly invested as per the objective of the fund. So this unethical practice is also not on, uh, avoidable. So these are some demerits of the mutual fund. And you have to remember that uh, if that question is really coming to my, your mind, whether mutual fund gives a kind of assured return, answer is no. No mutual fund gives a kind of assured return. There is always a possibility 
of loss also. So one is expected to read the upper document carefully. Now let us understand few terms related to mutual fund. One is net asset value. So as you know, money is invested by the fund. That when money is invested, it creates some asset. And there might be some liabilities of that fund also. When I say net asset value, it means market value of the assets of the scheme minus liabilities. What is the total market value of the asset? Minus total value asset value, value of the total market value of the liabilities, it getting net asset. Right. And if you divide that net asset value with the number of units, you can get what is the NAV per unit, what is the net asset value. Okay, suppose fund is having 10 lakh rupees assets and 5 lakh, uh, and let us say 4 lakh rupees liabilities and net asset value is 6 lakh rupees. And this is what we are talking about market value. Right? Okay, and if it has got 1000 units, so 6 lakh divided by 1000, so NAV per unit is 600 rupees. This is how it is to be calculated net asset value. And uh, there is one more concept which is called the TER or total expenses ratio. So mutual funds performances are also measured through this TER or total expenses ratio. Total. This shows what is the total cost of managing the fund. If cost is more, then naturally income will be less, fund value will be less. If cost is less, the fund value will be more. Right. Then one more concept which is called asset under management, AUM. This talks about market value of the asset which the fund is managed, entire market value. So when we are deciding if where to make investment, so one can compare NAB, one can see the TER, one can see the AUV. On that basis, one will be deciding where the money is to be invested. I'll do one thing. I'll be taking you to one website right now. Just a minute, give me a moment, which will be helpful to understand many things about mutual fund. Give me a moment. Yeah, you. I, I think you are seeing the browser. I'm writing here, www. Are you able to Read it. I'm PM searching for I'm India. Okay. Are you able to see it now? Yes, sir. Okay. This is you see ampindia.com. You can find out the website of Association of Mutual Funds in India. You can understand many things from this website. Let us say I'm going to, oh, you see, these are various mutual fund schemes and the performance you can see here. TER, you know what is TER, total expenses ratio, one can find it out. NAV data, one can understand. And if you go to the investors corner here, you can have this, what is introduction to mutual funds, types of mutual fund expenses ratio, risk in mutual funds, advantages, net asset value, all these things you can get. Okay. So I expect all of you should visit to this website to understand all these things. Okay. Right. One more website I'm taking you. Again, you might have heard this thing. This is the mutual fund. Sahi here. Yeah, mutualfundsaiye.com, if you go there. Yeah, are you able to see it now? Yes, sir, visual, sir. Here also you can see types of mutual fund, more about mutual fund, region to invest. What is the difference? All these things, you can get it. How mutual fund, how to start investment. You can get all this thing. Okay. Okay, friends. 
there are few more terms we need to understand like what is sell price what is the purchase price what is redemption price what is sales load all these thing what is money market uh, schemes and what is the difference between stock and mutual fund all these concepts are there so we'll be learning this thing in our next session but today i think we had some broad idea about this mutual funds okay any query you have